Uh, I'm going to present the mm, mm, network for innovation in hospitals that the Instituto de Salud Carlos III, it's equivalent to the National Health uh, Agency for funding uh, research in, 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 uh, in the health system, is, is pre uh, preparing a few slides about the mm, starting point. Starting point in Spain, as has been uh, more or less discussed before, is characterized by a good position in terms of uh, research. So Spain is approximately the ninth country in terms of uh, production of scientific uh, papers. But if we go to study the number of patents, Spain is in a, in a very low position. That's the uh, first fact. Second fact, there's a significant increase in the funding, in the support from the uh, public agencies to research and development, and there's also a significant and, and increasing uh, support for uh, innovation activities. CDTI is the Spanish uh, organism uh, which uh, finds uh, industrial innovation. So there's a clear effort from the public administrations but, and this is my first point in the talk, if you look at the investment uh, by the company, by the industrial companies, you can't see such an increase. So in Spain, uh, of, of course in absolute terms there's an increase, but as you see the percentage of, of, the, of the resources dedicated to research and development, it seems that Spanish companies really do not believe too much in innovation for the time being. That's as a matter of fact, first point. As a consequence, uh, you can see that uh, while Spain accounts for, about, uh, for more than 3% of the knowledge in, in the world, it only accounts 10 times less for the uh, industrial production. So that's a clear mismatch in our country, which, uh, which is not the same in other places as, for instance, Sweden, Denmark, or Holland. So that's the starting point. Uh, as a consequence, our, we have a, a clear trade gap. And, and, and the difference between export and import is uh, definitely negative in our country, in particular in the area of, of healthcare technologies. In this same sense, uh, it's interesting the results of, of a survey that was conducted by this, uh, this um, uh, consulting company in, in the, at the end of the past year, and they say that uh, while well, Spain makes the 20 out of 23 countries in profitability, of the public investment uh, supporting research and development uh, below Turkey, Romania or Portugal for instance. And that's, that, that's bad. But it's even worse. One of the phrases I, I took from the, from the study, and it's a phrase by the, the, the president of the, of the Commerce Camera in Madrid or in Spain, I don't remember exactly, he said that uh, the problem derives that uh, the fact that there's no enough public stimulus to encourage private investment. So that's an absolutely wrong position. Because if, if industrial companies think that they need public support to invest in, in innovation, that explains uh, why we are where we are. So in summary, the, the starting point in, in Spain is that uh, we have a low private investment in innovation and increasing uh, public investment, but inefficient. Uh, few large driving industries in our country. The, our tradition in, in transmitting knowledge between industries and in particular between academia and industry is uh, very low. And uh, on the other hand, academia uh, research groups uh, up to now don't have a, a very clear interest in the valorization in, in transferring their achievements to the industry. There are several um, peculiar particular aspects in, in hospitals. Uh, one is uh, derived from the fact that uh, uh, you know the, the the paradigms of, uh, of innovation. One is that of closed innovation, which can be um, assumed by some large companies in which all ideas uh, are born in the company and those who don't uh, reach a development uh, phase just disappear and that's all. The, the other paradigm is the so-called open uh, innovation paradigm and in this case the trick is that uh, 
uh, ideas that cannot be developed uh, within, the, within the company can go outside and produce spin-outs or other type of, uh, of uh, um, ways of, of exploitation and external ideas can be incorporated into the streamline of, of the production. And this is particularly important for, for hospitals just because we are here, so we are outside the standard streamline of, uh, in, in the industries. So if we don't stick to the open innovation paradigm, we don't have nothing to do in this scheme. So this is uh, actually, uh, definitely key for us as hospitals. Also, in hospitals, uh, one uh, clear problem, and is, is the one we want to address in the, in the network, is that uh, this connection between the research and innovation performed at the hospital uh, to the industry is not uh, so direct. And that's very difficult. It's what I call in, in engineering terms, there's uh, impedance mismatch between what uh, we do here and what the uh, industry does in the factories. And this requires a sort of, uh, of uh, oil to be able to convert this into that. So this technical support has to do with the valorization, has to do with the technical assessment, may have to do with uh, doing prototyping of the ideas developed here before being transferred there and, and with uh, some pre-evaluation of the ideas. And this simply doesn't exist in most of the cases in, in our country and in the hospitals. <coughs> so the idea of our network is that uh, the members will not be only the hospitals or the few hospitals which actually are involved in the network, but a large amount of so-called collaborating entities, which may must include the possibility of supporting those pre-development stages necessary to complete the workflow from the hospital to the industry, and they are universities, technological centers, small industries, etc. And they may have different types of participation. Uh, but uh, one of the problems behind this is the lack of tradition of this type of collaboration in our country up to now. Some key factors of what's happening uh, with innovation in hospitals may be these ones. Uh, as for external factors, one in very important for us is the lack of maturity of local industry, which is uh, I've been commented before. Uh, multinational companies in Spain uh, are no more than commercial delegations in most of the cases. So for the big companies we have that problem. As for small companies or national companies, there are very few companies uh, able to innovate really and they don't have tradition of collaboration with academia. However, and on, on, the positive, uh, on the positive side we have that the public funding at this moment and, and the concern of the administrations is very high. So, uh, well, it's intense, improvable probably, is a clear positive factor and uh, this is interesting and it, probably it works. Uh, in Spain at this moment the amount of money uh, uh, funding research and innovation the, the highest amount of money comes from CDTI, which is the organism that works through industry. So that forces us to go to the industry in order to get those funds. So it's not so easy to get just funds for research. If we want big funds, we have to uh, establish alliances with the industry. That works. As for internal factors, uh, while well, there are many problems in the hospitals uh, regarding innovation, one is the difficulty to detect innovation. The hospitals don't have um, structures prepared to detect the innovation that is produced in the hospital. Uh, besides, uh, some of the tools required to work with this as uh, non-disclosure agreements, uh, patents, etc., are unfamiliar for, for personnel in, in, in the healthcare system. Uh, another problem is that of the maturity of the ideas uh, and that requires uh, such a pre-development stage which most of the times cannot be performed uh, within the hospital. And, uh, and another problem is that uh, the idea is not enough and, and most of the cases what you have to uh, bring to the industry is not just the idea but also the business model. So this is very, very interesting but who's going to buy this? Uh, what is this for? If you, if you don't know that, uh, if you are the author of the idea, then probably the, the thing is not going to work. 
So there are some tools, as, uh, for instance, related to establishing initial contacts as the non-disclosure agreements or, or how to write collaboration agreements. There are uh, tools uh, regarding the IP protection, the intellectual property protection, uh, as patents of software registration. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, more on this now. And, and what happens once the products go into development or exploitation phase and we have to deal with contracts and ways of licensing, etc. As for patents, that's one of the problems at, at this moment in our country. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, we tend, everybody probably tend to oversimplify things. And now the idea is that uh, you are not a good scientist if you only have scientific publications. You must also have patents. That's as simple as that. But that's definitely wrong because patents uh, may mean nothing. Uh, how much a patent is worth? Uh, nothing. If you have the patent at your drawer in the desk, so if you don't sell the patent, it's absolutely nothing. So only patents under exploitation mean something. And uh, okay, so then uh, the number of patents you have is a good indicator. It's not at all. So uh, it's exploitation what matters. What things are under exploitation? Are how how much revenue are you obtaining from those things? Are they necessary? Not even. There are other ways of protecting the, your development which, is, which are not ex, uh, patents. And finally, uh, you are protected with your patents, you don't know. You will know after the, uh, after the lawsuit. Before you don't know. So, this is not so clear. And uh, one interesting thing is the, uh, to separate uh, what I call offensive or defensive patents. Offensive patents are those oriented to uh, avoid that anybody may copy your idea. But that's very difficult. That's very expensive. And uh, uh, if, you, if you want to litigate with a, with a manufacturer in, in Korea which is trying to copy your thing, uh, you, you need a, a very large legal department. So that's quite difficult. The important thing is that at least you shouldn't be uh, suited by, so if you have the idea, at least you can defend and not being suited by another who's not only copying your idea but demanding you. So, but that's much more simple because you have the possibility of uh, putting your ideas in, into the public domain. So if ideas are in public domain, you, you cannot be suited. Of course, the protection is not so much. but. Uh, in some, in some sectors where things